Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here. This week we're going to talk a little bit about product knowledge. And what I mean by that is do you know how to get the most out of your decoders? Well, let's discuss. Let's go ahead and get started. Now over the years there's been many, many, many different DCC systems that have been released and all of them do things just a little bit differently depending on how you push the buttons. They're all essentially trying to create the same DCC signal. So when it comes to DCC, the standard is the signal that's actually on the track. The DCC systems then depend on how to generate that command and then our decoders listen to the command and we determine how to respond to that command. Now, for many of you guys, over the years, we've done these webinar series, and webinar four will kind of break down the DCC signal and how it works. For example, the DCC command may be as simple as, hey, everybody, listen up, loco 3504, move forward, speed step 10, turn on F0, turn on F1, turn on F4. Well, it's up to the system manufacturers to determine how to create that command to tell the decoder what to do. And that's where it really becomes important that you understand and know your DCC system. Because ultimately the throttles are the gateway to helping you enjoy your model the most. Because let's be honest, if you're afraid of pushing buttons on this thing, how are you ever gonna get the most out of the model? And I realize I have a system here in front, but you get the idea. If we want to be able to do more with our models, we're buying the best decoders out there, the Soundtracks products. But are you limiting yourself because of your knowledge of this? Or are you limiting your enjoyment or your experience using the models because you really don't need XYZ feature? For example, I'll use All Aboard. That's something I never use, so I take it out of the function mapping chart on my own locomotives. But ultimately, this is what is gonna guide our locomotives. We need to determine how to use it. And so when it comes to these, they all come with a manual, and you can see the different types of manual. This is the Digitrack Zephyr manual right here. This is the NCE Power Cab. And they all come with a manual, and it is kind of dry reading, but it is very important to understand which buttons to press. Because like, for example, if I wanna program an address, I don't want to just randomly start pro pushing buttons on here because if I don't understand how this works, I very well could cause problems when it comes to programming, especially if you're doing programming uh, on the power cab because it uses the main line as a full powered programming track. If you didn't know that, you better check out your user's guides. But there's other systems out there that, for example, the MRC will come with a user's guide and a manual to explain how to do it but also all the instructions are actually written right there on the back. So hopefully this will be complete enough for you to be able to do just about anything you want to do with the MRC system. But ultimately you got to know how to use your system. And it's not really difficult. And in most cases it's just knowing which buttons to press. And one of the biggest common things we get when people call us up is they want to access, for example, I'll say F14, which came from an email earlier today. Function 14 on our Soundtracks decoders is actually known as switching mode. And switching mode takes the momentum and bypasses it, so it turns off the momentum. And then it also takes your commanded speed, which is how fast your system is telling your decoder to go, and then cuts that into one half. So that that way you can spot your cars directly at the industry, or you can do your coupling and so forth of your locomotives and your freight cars in the yard, AKA switching mode. But if you don't know how to access function 14 using your system, that may be a feature that you decide to leave out because you don't know how to use your system. And on the power cab and the pro cabs, it's as simple as pressing and holding the shift and the zero key. Now, obviously I can't show it to you here, so I'll show you a screenshot. But what you see in the window is F0 through F14, and that's telling you that the zero key is now 10, the one key is 11, the two key is 12, the four key is 14, the six key is 16, and the nine key is now 19. Now, if you push and hold the shift and zero a second time, you'll see F20 to 28 in the window. And that's telling you that the F, or the zero key is now function 20, the one key is 21, the four key is 24, and so on. 
So that's a key differentiator because this Digitrack system is a little bit differently because you're going to push the function button and the one key and in your window you're going to see funk plus 10 and that's telling you that now the one key, the zero key is 10 the one key is 11 the two key is 12 and so on so you press the funk in the two key now you're going to see funk plus 20 and that's going to give you the 20 functions that are higher up and MRC has their own way of doing it as well. So each one of these systems, you kind of need to know how to access that. Now, the user's guides, of course, will explain a lot of that and how to access that. Now, for more information to get to all of that, if you actually go to our YouTube channel, which you're watching this on right now, and you search Soundtracks Webinar number four, as I mentioned, Webinar four will teach you all about DCC. Webinar 6 will teach you all about CV programming, the different modes of programming, how the CV bits are structured, and so forth. And then Webinar 9 will actually take these three systems that are here in front of me, the NCE, the Digitrax, and the MRC, and it will actually show you step by step which buttons to press and how to access all of that. Because like I said, ultimately, this is the gateway. This is what's gonna get you to being able to use all of the features of our decoders. And the idea behind this is that we want to help you enjoy your hobby because if you're intimidated by these things here, then you may find yourself limiting your enjoyment or limiting certain ways that you run your trains. But if you actually understand how everything works and you know it, now it doesn't become quite as intimidating. Now it actually feels kind of natural now that, um, that you understand it. And now you think to yourself, wow, look at all these cool features I have been ignoring before because I didn't know how to use these. Now there's other systems out there, for example, Java Model Railroad Interface or the JMRI. Now the JMRI has a couple of things called Decoder Pro and then there's the Operations Pro and there's different packets in there. But today we're gonna to talk primarily about the Decoder Pro because this is one of the most common calls that we get. Somebody is using a JMRI and they're trying to get a particular feature on the decoder to work, but it's not working. So they call us up and they ask, and I wish I had a dollar for every time I had the call. Hey, I'm trying to get XYZ to work. I'm using Decoder Pro. Can you help? Well, the short answer is, is we don't actually write the JMRI Decoder Pro software. That's done by a group of dedicated volunteers and they do a fantastic job, but they don't work for us. They're doing this on their own volunteer time. So inevitably, there's going to be possible mistakes that are thrown in there. And the best part about it is that when you know the decoder and you understand the DCC system, you can fix those mistakes. Because if you go in and it's not doing what you expect it to, then you read our user's guide that will tell you in detail how the feature works and how the settings are. Then you use your DCC system to program the CVs directly. Then you get it working the way you want. You can always read back into JMRI and find out what changed or what was different. And it may be something as simple as you misunderstood their explanations. It could be they misunderstood our explanations and had it do something different. When you're checkboxing certain things, it's not doing what you want it to do. Or it could be they were in left field and completely missed the mark. But the good news is, is they are a very good responsive group of people. So if you find a mistake like that, be sure to send them the information and they will get it fixed. One thing I will tell you just from a personal standpoint is I quit using JMRI years ago, long before I donned the purple shirt. And the reason was, was because in that particular instance, this was the original Tsunamis, and I was trying to get the function mapping checkboxes to work. And every time I read through it, the checkboxes were marked proper, but my decoder wasn't behaving the way I wanted it to. So I got frustrated and grabbed the Soundtracks user's guide, read it, set the CVs properly, and lo and behold, sure enough, my decoder worked the way it wanted to. When I read it back, suddenly all the same things were checked, which meant it wasn't doing what I thought it was doing. So it's just one of those pitfalls to beware that that's not necessarily something wrong with the decoder because we didn't write the JMRI software. Now, when it comes to operating your trains, the JMRI has the uh, Wii throttle for the Apple and engine driver for Android that you can connect to your Wi-Fi network on your computer, which will then allow you to run your train with your cell phone. Now, there's a few limitations on the engine driver. You can only select local addresses and you can't program any CVs. So when it comes to building advanced consists and things like that, you'll have to do that ahead of time. For more on advanced consists, check out webinar 14. 
but you have to have built that prior to using your throttle on your phone. So that's one of the limitations, but it does work. The other thing is you can't do anything else on your phone. Your engine driver or your Wii throttle has to be on the top screen because as soon as you go out to do something like answer a call or take a photograph of your train, for example, the engine driver or the Wii throttle will stop your train because obviously you're not paying attention to the throttle. So that's just one of those things that you may have to understand and learn. Now, the one thing I will say about the Blue Nami. Now, our Blue Nami is a DCC decoder at heart, so it will work with every single one of these systems, including the engine driver and the Wii throttle. However, the advantage to the Blue Nami app that you would use and download that's free to your device is you can talk directly to the decoder. So let's say, for example, if you use NC at home, but the club has Digitrax. Well, now you're not frustrated because you're having to learn all the buttons on two different systems. Your decoder is going to work the same way whether you're using NCE or Digitrax, provided you're using the Blue Nami app. Now, if you want to run your Blue Nami with your Tsunami 2, then you would use your DCC system. And again, this is where learning your DCC system and the ins and outs of all of this really will help you a long way because it's not difficult and we're here to help you. If you get stuck or have questions about Soundtracks products and how to use them, we're happy to help you every step of the way because ultimately we want you to enjoy your hobby. What I really mean is our hobby because we all enjoy this wonderful hobby and there's so many different facets of it. And you may not be an electrical engineer, but the good news is, is you don't necessarily need to be an electrical engineer. You just need to be able to do simple math when it comes to programming CVs through your DCC systems. But understanding which buttons to press to create whatever you want it to do is gonna be ultimately the key. Now again, this is here to encourage you guys. We're here to help you, but also, like I said, Webinar 9 will teach you the major three different DCC systems so that that way you can get a feel for what it takes to run your locomotives on your layout depending on what your system is. Now obviously we couldn't do a educational video for every single DCC system that's out there, so if you do have one of the others that are not the major three here in the United States, then you'll want to check out their user's guides and read through it after watching webinar four and webinar six because then that way you'll be able to see how these decoders are, how the systems work to talk to the decoders. Because ultimately the decoder is only doing what it's told by the DCC system. So if you're limiting yourself because you don't know how to use this, then you can never get the full benefits of the decoders you're buying. Guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. And again, it's meant to encourage you and to uh, challenge you to go out and learn a little bit more about it. Um, take a few minutes because you may find that unlocks a lot of fun that you can be having with your railroads. With that, we'll sign off for the day. We appreciate it. If you have any comments, please leave them in the, in the comment section below. Be sure to like our videos and subscribe to our channel where you can get great content just like this. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.